Welcome to the fourth and final video of the P2 chapter, Binomial Theorem. As usual, on the screen is a starter question. Pause the video now if you've got time and give this one a go. Then come back and I will go through it on the screen. So we've got the function given to us here, 1 plus kx to the power 10, where we're given k as a constant. And don't worry about that k, you just use it as a normal number when you're doing the expansion. Then they're telling us, given that the coefficient of x cubed is 15 in the expansion, find the value of that constant k. And then there's a second part, state the value of the term independent of x. So what I'm going to do straight away is just split this into the two parts a and b. We'll do a first. So if you've got your formula there, I'm going to be using the general term in the formula. And I know from the question here, kx is very simple, x power 1 in this expansion. So to get an x cubed out of this, I'm going to want to use the term where r is equal to 3 in the general term. So I'm going to have 10 choose 3 times a, which in this case is a 1, to the power of n minus r, which is 7, times the b term, which is kx times r, which I've chosen to be 3, in order to get the x cubed. So this is the general term of the formula, where n is equal to 10, r is equal to 3, a is 1, and b is kx. And if I simplify all of that using my calculator, 10 choose 3 is 120, 1 power 7 is just 1, and then I've got k cubed, x cubed. And the question is telling us that this coefficient 120k cubed must equal 15. So I can say 120k cubed equals 15, and then I just solve this. Divide through by 120, we get 1 over 8, uh, which is a, a nice fraction to be cube rooting. That gives us a half. So the answer to part A, the value of k, is a half. Part B is a very quick and easy question in this case. The word state should give you a clue how quick and easy this is. It doesn't say find or calculate or work out, just state it. And that's easy because the term independent of x is just another way to say the constant term. Now, If the bracket was more complicated, if we had a, an x power 2, say, here, and an x power minus 3 here, then you would have to figure out which one of the expansion terms will give you the constant. But in this case, it's quite simple. It's just going to be the first one. And the first one is going to be 1 to the power of 10. 1 to the power of 10 is just 1. So the constant in this case is simply a 1. OK, this final video, we're going to talk about using the binomial expansion. And we can use it to estimate values or approximate difficult functions. This used to be very, very important before things like calculators and computers came along. And we'll see an example towards the end where we can do quite a difficult calculation without using a calculator with this method. And the great thing now is that, of course, you can just use your calculator to check it out and see whether you're right. But for things that can't be calculated for whatever reason, this is an alternative approach. And this all hangs on the idea that if you have a small number, and by small, my magnitude here, I'm talking 0.1 or less, then if you square that, that becomes pretty small. If you've got, let's take 0.1, the biggest number that we'll be using for this, and you square it, you get 0.01, which is pretty small. But if you cube that, of course, you get even smaller. And the idea here is that by the time you get past about power 4, the numbers that you're getting are going to be so small that you can basically just ignore them. Because if you are estimating or approximating, chances are you only need two or three or four decimal places, 
and by the time you are using power 5 on a small number, you're getting too small to worry about. So to approximate a function or estimate a value, in these cases what we're going to do is do the expansion and then simply ignore large powers of x. But it's very important that you understand this can only happen when you're starting off with a small value of x. So it's only valid at, depending on how small your x is. It will only be valid up to a certain amount. So we'll do an example of this. This is a good question in an exam because they can build it up. They can get you to do the expansion like we're going to do here and then go on to use the expansion which we're going to do on the next slide. So first of all we need to do the expansion. So we want the first four terms in ascending powers of x. So that means I'm going to want my a to be the 1, my b will be minus x over 4, n of course is 10, and I'll start at the first one and just go until I've got 4. So I've got 1 power 10 plus 10 to 1 which is 10 times 1 to the power 9 times minus x over 4 to the 1 plus 10 choose 2 uh, on my calculator that is 45 1 to the power 8 times minus x over 4 squared and 10 choose 3 we had earlier was 120 1 to the power 7 minus x over 4 cubed and the expansion continues, but I don't need any more of it. I only need the first four terms. OK, grab a calculator and simplify this. We get 1 to minus 5x over 2. The minus here is squared away, so that's a plus 45. And the 4 squared, so 45 over 16, I don't think that will cancel, x squared, and oh, 120 over 4 cubed. Let me just do that on the calculator, make sure I don't make a mistake. That's 15 over 8. The minus cubed will still be a minus, so we've got minus 15 over 8x cubed, and because I put an equal sign, I'm still going to keep that dot 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 on the end. If I want to get rid of that plus dot dot dot, then really I should change the equals to an approximately equal to. So this is the expansion. What we're going to do now is we're going to use the expansion to estimate the value of this, 0 0.975 to the power of 10. And yes, you can do this on your calculator, but imagine with me times when you weren't able to do something like this on your calculator. What I'm about to do on the screen is a much easier way than trying to do this by doing 10 multiplications of 0 0.975. And we're going to give our answer to four decimal places, and then I'll just bang it on the calculator just to see how close we are with our approximation. So there are two steps here. First, in order to get this, I need to make sure that the thing inside the bracket that I'm putting to the power of 10 is actually equal to this number. And that is what will tell me what value of x I need to use. And in terms of an exam, this will always be very carefully done so that you get a very nice value of x that will work. You won't end up with a number too big to use. So first, find the value of x that will get the number you want. So very simply, we're going to change 1 minus x over 4 so that it becomes 0 0.975. Rearrange that, and in this case, you get the very nice easy number, 0 0.1. Now again, imagine if you didn't have a calculator, this would be a particularly nice number to use, because if you ended up with a 0 0.632 or something, squaring and cubing that number would be almost as bad as the original question. Whereas a 0 0.1, 0 0.1, here, square it, 0 0.01. Here, cube it, 0 0.001. 
and then you've just got to work out the fractions. So this is a very elegant way of making something that without a calculator would be horrible into something that's actually quite straightforward. So we've got the value. It is a reasonably small number. I can put it into my expansion now. And that just means substituting the x into what you've got from the previous part of the question and working it out. So let's go with blue here. So we've got a 1 minus 5 over 2 times 0 0.1 plus 45 over 16 times 0 0.01 or 0 0.1 squared if you want to leave it in that form for now. 15 over 8 times 0 0.1 cubed or 0 0.001. And I'm going to do the plus dot 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 here, and then approximately here. Or, oh, hmm. Yes, I'm going to do it that way. So now I'm going to not put the plus dot 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 on the end, because I'm going to actually calculate this. So I've got 1 minus 5 over 2 times 0 0.1 plus 45 over 16 times 0 0.01 minus 15 over 8 times 0 0.001 and the answer I get is 0 0.77625 and that number is equal to 0 0.77625 six three to four decimal places now be careful with your equal sign here this thing with the plus dot 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 is approximately equal to this because i didn't do all of these things on the end i cut it off that's where my approximation happened but this number is equal to this number to four decimal places so make sure you get your approximation symbol in the right place at the right time so let's have a quick check and see how close that is. 0 0.975 to the power of 10. It's usually pretty close. Uh, 0 0.776329620 dot, 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 dot. So in this case, to four decimal places, it's actually the same. To five decimal places, it's not. However, you wouldn't expect this to be accurate to five decimal places because it's only given us five decimal places. So that was pretty good. And yes, I'm aware that I did use my calculator to go from here to here to save time, but I hope you can see that going from here to here without a calculator would not be anywhere near as bad as doing this calculation here. So there is a full example of how this is used to estimate a value of something. And that is the end of the chapter. A quick additional note here that ties in with p4 and i'm going to include this here just because you might have thought of a question or two about the fact that all of our brackets so far have been to the power of a positive integer but we don't always have powers of positive integers what happens if we want a bracket with a negative power or a fractional power we can't use those from what we've done so far and it's a very easy way to explain this if you think about Pascal's triangle that we've been using. And I say, OK, we've got a power of 6.2. You can't have rho 6.2 in Pascal's triangle. It goes from 6 to 7. There is no rho in between. And same with a negative number. You can't have a negative term 6. There are no negative terms in Pascal's triangle. You've got all counting numbers. However, when the a in the bracket is a 1. And there's another little caveat as well about the b. We'll come back to that in a second. When this is a 1, you can have negative and non-integer values of n. So it isn't just for positive integers. So long as the a is a 1, and you can manipulate it so that it will be then although Pascal's triangle doesn't really have a meaning, you can use the formula in a slightly different way. So we move away from Pascal's triangle in P4 
and we start using the formula a little bit more because you can adapt this for these situations whereas you cannot adapt Pascal's triangle the, the idea of Pascal's triangle being involved kind of breaks down so I've put this on the end here in case you've had that question what if n is negative or non-integer or if you've been using the formula in the formula booklet and you've noticed that there is another formula here and this is a more specific formula than this whereas this only applies for natural numbers for n so I say it's more specific because you must have a 1 here in this formula whereas here you can have anything in the brackets but this one is a little more general because here the n can be any real number but the second caveat I alluded to your magnitude of x must be less than 1 and the reason for all of that you will discover in p4 but just in case you had questions or if you had seen this in the formula booklet and were wondering how it connected so there you go there is chapter on the binomial theorem and you can now practice using questions from exercise 4e for this specific idea of using the formula for approximations and you can do the chapter 4 review exercise which will cover the whole chapter and perhaps I will see you in another video.